Hey everyone, John Batdorf here, and today we are looking at Tiffin's DFX 3.0 software. I've had a chance to work with the software now for a couple of weeks, and I don't know about you, but when I think of Tiffin, I think of filters, and that's what they've done here. They've taken so many of their filters, and they've simulated them in the digital world, and it's a really impressive suite. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a series of uh, presentations on this software, but I thought today we would spend a little time just orienting ourselves uh, with the software and doing the very basic, uh, uh, I guess, uh, manipulation, if you will, with this image uh, using the software. So here's an image I shot in northern Michigan. I haven't done anything with it. I didn't have any filters with me at the time, and I think this is a great image to uh, use DFX on. So here's the original, and right here is the current layer we're working on. And these Underneath Film Lab, these are some of our options. Now, here are all the filter effects, and you can just click right through these. Uh, there's so many of them. Like I said, the one thing you're going to find with this program, there are just so many different effects. It, it takes a little while, and I think that was my biggest problem, is just understanding what it was I liked, uh, because there's just so many different things. But I am a plug-in junkie, and this is, this is a must-have. So... Uh, Anyway, so go through and kind of take a look, and you click on any one of these, and the effect will show up here in the right. Uh, let's go back to the, the film lab real quick, because uh, we're going to start in flashing. And here are all of our different options. Uh, now I cheated. I already worked this image, so I know what direction I wanted to head in with it. Um, in this case, you can click through these, and a preview will open up in this main window just by going through. Now I'm going to start right here at shadows and this is uh, deep yellow. So this is where I am going to start. And so I can label it up here. You'll notice right here in the top left hand corner just so I know where I'm at. And I can click this to add this layer. Um, now one of the things that you can do at the very basic level with all these different layers is you can change the opacity. So just by clicking on this slider, we can move it like that. And you'll notice it changes. But I'm going to leave this at 100%. You also have the ability, and if you want to, to change how the blending's handled. So we can go to Darken, Multiply. But I think in this situation, normal is best. But we have that ability, just like in Photoshop, to make this the adjustments to this layer. Um, so let's start right here, and I'm going to add another layer. Um, one of the things I want to show you, though, is if you want to compare as you're going along, you can do an, a number of things. You can come up here, and you can click the AB Compare. That's the original. That's where we're at right now. So original already an improvement. Um, so as you're going along, if you want to compare your image, see where you're at, that's a button you'd want to use. And much like in um, Nick software or in Lightroom, you know, we have different compare options. We can put them side by side, top of one another, or stack them. We're just going to go back to the single view. So now I'm going to head over to image because I want to add another layer and I want to show you folks how I, how I did that. And like I said, I've already done this ahead of time. I know which direction I'm going. And I'm going to click on Selective Saturation. We have a lot of different options here. I'm going to saturate my shadows. And you'll notice um, it brings out the green as well as the red, but primarily in the shadow area. This is a little over the top for me. It's very, It's a little bright. So what I would do in this situation is I would dial this back, the passy, a little bit. Maybe to right there. And, and that works. That works for me. So if we want to compare it, once again, we click that button right there, the AB Compare. We can turn off any of the layers just by clicking on this Thunderbolt right here. That turns off that effect, turns it back on. Turns off the effect there, turns it back on. Um, so we're going to spend more time talking about creating a mask and painting and using their easy mask. It's a very powerful tool. 
But at the very basic level, this is where I see a lot of people using this software because you don't have to carry all these filters with you. And these are a lot of the filters that we normally would have in our bag. So we went very quickly from, let's just take a look at these Im images. We'll stack them from there to here. I mean, it's just a, it's very, as you can see. So it's a very, it's very slick, um, very easy to use. And like I said, we'll do some masking in the future. Now let's, I, the question I, I know I'm going to get is what happens if I want to save this? Is there a way to save this preset? There is. All you need to do is go underneath file and save setup. So you would save the setup, you would give it a name and type it in. Maybe it would be, um, in this case, forest, save it. Now I can load that preset up in the future to get this exact same effect. And there you have it. This is a, this is a great program for applying filters in the digital world. Um, I think a lot of people will probably use it as I've shown here, but there are advanced ways to obviously manipulate these images uh, using masking and whatnot, and we'll, we'll spend some more time on that uh, probably tomorrow. So check back. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop me an email at john at badtrophotography.com. Thank you.